Happy Wednesday and welcome to GMNC. I'm Pratisha Singh and you're watching Belito TV. Thank you to Extreme Events for our stunning studio furniture and wow cutting for our awesome GMNC signage. Did you know we only have 135 days left until the end of the year? And today is actually never give up day. So make the best of today and every day going forward, making your dreams come true. On that note, Tony Supermoney will kick off the lineup this morning with your midweek dose of motivation and inspiration. Carla Welch from All Creations will be sharing her insights on digital marketing and much more to help you grow your business in a cost-effective manner. Exciting, exciting news. We have in studio Michael McGlynn, Olympic marathon swimmer who has just returned from the Tokyo Olympics. He will be sharing his very intriguing journey with us. We will watch a pre-recorded interview with Farah Manju, an empowerment coach for women and children. She'll be sharing her coaching experiences with us. Haley and Dion, as per usual, will provide the weather and surf reports. Our musician showcase this morning promises to be a goodie. It is Rowan Stewart, so stay tuned for that one. Round up the kids for educational and funny Laugh Out Larry, which we'll play after the show. Get comfortable, get your coffee, and enjoy the lineup. Welcome back, Tony. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Good to be back. Thank you so much. And we're talking exciting news about goals and visions this morning? Yes, we do. We're going to be talking about visions and goals. And I like the, the, the International Day of Don't Give Up, you know, Never Give Up. And it, it kind of coincides with what I want to talk about. But as I was chatting with Offset, it's, it's quite coincidental that you got your stuff together for what I want to talk about today. And that's actually creating a vision board. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a common topic uh, quite often that's discussed, but many people lose hope and they give up before they actually start to manifest stuff that's on the vision board. Yes. And I thought today I want to go practical and discuss a little bit about how we create a vision board and, and you know, what's the purpose of a vision board as yes, well. Yes, let's tell people that actually don't know what actually is a vision board. Yeah, a vision board is basically a collection of images and, and uh, scripture and, and uh, motivational stuff that you put on a board. Mm -hmm. And there's two ways of actually doing it. There's the old school that I've followed for many years where you actually get a board physically a board and you put on pictures that you get from magazines and newspapers that that tie up to and link up to your goals mm -hmm. okay and then the other format so if I want a Ferrari then I'm gonna put my yes. red Ferrari there. yes but I want right. to talk about that just now as well mm -hmm. and then there's the other way of actually doing it is getting the digital format which I think you've been work, you're going to be working yes, on as well. Yes, I'm actually starting my own. <laughs> yes. Now, I want to talk about why sometimes the, the actual board, it's the concept fails. Why doesn't it work? Mm -hmm. And it's exactly to do with the fact that you talk about a Ferrari, you've got to be very, very specific about what you want in that car. Yes. Right? So to start off, before you get your pictures and your, 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 your stuff that you want to put on, put up a list of what you want. And immediately there's a challenge for many of us here, Pratika, because we tend to think of what we need rather than what we want. Mm -hmm. So we're immediately restricting ourselves by looking at what we need. And I think that's the way we've been brought up to say, you know, ask for what you need, not what you want. Yes. But here yeah, I want to encourage the viewers to look at what you want. So go wild on a list of so what you want. So dream big also. Yes. Because a lot of the time Absolutely we face limitations. Big. Absolutely like, big. How can I get that? Yes. You know? Right. Because we're not now, thinking about the how. No. Don't focus on the how because that's the other mistake we make. We look at it and say, Ferrari, oh, never in my lifetime. But the reality is that it can work out because you create your own reality. Yes. Right? So when you're looking at what you want on your list, then you go out and look at pictures and images that tie up to that list of goals or mm -hmm. desires. And then you put it on this board that you have there. So physically you've got a board where you put all these there and you can have text as well related to what you want. So it is around your relationships, your finances, your health and all of that, your career and all of that there as well. Right. The other mistake people make is that they are not attaching an emotion to it. It's very important to attach you in emotion. Now, what we do practically is look at it during the day and you start living it. You start experiencing it and you actually create goosebumps. Now, I remember my first vision board. I had this car that I had wanted. I actually went into a showroom. Right. I sat in that car. 
I held the steering wheel uh -huh. and I felt my knuckles turn, saw it turn white and I was so excited with enthusiasm that I was riding this car. I got pictures from the showroom, put it on my vision board and three years later I was driving that car. How amazing. Right? So it's not about how it's going to happen. The universe will deliver as long as you're specific uh -huh. and as long as you attach an emotion. You're going to be excited about what's on that vision board. The other challenge that you do have is that it's not a board of clutter. Right. So try and look at specific stuff that you have that, that's going to be meaningful and related and connected to your list of goals and desires. Because a lot of times we put on stuff over there and we just think that it's all going to manifest in time. Uh -huh. Then this other issue that you've got to understand is that it's called the period of gestation. When you look at something on the vision board, it takes time to actually appear in reality. Mm -hmm. So you've got to allow that. Yes. Right? You've got to allow it. Now, the reason I'm talking about a vision board today is because we're fast approaching spring. Mm -hmm. And many people use the seasons as a time to actually get the uh, reviewing the vision board. But I want to encourage the viewers who haven't tried it to actually do so. Mm -hmm. It can be a fun uh, activity for the, uh, you know, the whole family. family. You yes. can do it with your kids. Yes. Everyone's getting what they love yes. and what they and want. And it's so good to get your teenagers involved with that and for them to develop their own vision board as well too. The other challenge you do have with the vision board is that we look at it too often and we're hoping that it's going to happen soon. We're kind of just creating more dis desperation out of it. Mm -hmm. The idea is to look at it on a regular basis and let it go. Let the vision go because you've got to pass it on so the universe has a chance to deli deliver on that. Yes. Now my first vision board was, it never cost me a cent. Because I just found an old masonite board. I you know, got it painted with some old paint on it and it looked quite lovely. And I just took pictures and put it out there. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it must be something that you enjoy and something that you actually have a great interest in and realize that it would definitely manifest. So and I know that you're going to get yours done soon as well. Too. Yes. And then also, Tony, you could also put in those emotions in the form of words. Yes. So what do you want to feel? Do yes. you want to feel happy? Then you yeah. can put the word happy. Yes. It's stuff. It's about inspiring you, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You want to now, feel inspired. And, and that's a good, good point you make because we've got the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Now, when you put out, say you're having a pretty dull day and you're not feeling too good and you're putting out there, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Now, your conscious mind is saying, no, you're not. You're not. <laughs> but your subconscious mind does not know that. Yes. Your subconscious mind does not know what's right and wrong, does not know what you're good. So it will deliver on the emotion of happiness. And as you say that and as you, it resonates with you, eventually it delivers. Yes. So that's the power of your subconscious mind. And one of the ways of actually getting into your subconscious mind is using the vision board. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you're going to get some amazing results when you get yours up and going as well. Definitely, too. definitely. I will. I'll share with you. <laughs> yeah. So I want to encourage the viewers to take time and try that out there. And don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep watching it and see that the manifestation takes place. And, yes. and you'll be amazed. And like you were saying, I mean, your car took three yes. years to yes. manifest. Yeah. But I mean, it manifested. It did. And had you not done the vision board, it probably wouldn't have. Yeah. Because very often we make the mistake or we tend to focus on how is it going to be delivered? How is this going to happen when we are going through much stress and anxiety and, and kind of stuff like that? Thing? But we are co-creators, Pratika. We create our own reality. That's mm -hmm. the magic of our subconscious mind. It's so closely related to the law of attraction, which is a topic for another day, which is my <laughs> passion. I love it to bits. And it is something that I will talk about quite extensively the next time around. But it is also your vision boards connected to the law of vibration. Mm -hmm. What level, what frequency is it vibrating for you is very, very crucial. The higher the frequency, the better the vibration, the greater and the quicker your manifest manifestation will take place. Cool. Awesome, Tony. That's such an interesting topic and I hope that the viewers actually go get your vision board and get it done. And remember, you can also do it digitally, right? Yes. Yeah. There's, there's and, and there's so many, you know, on the social platforms, there's so many ways of actually looking at getting your vision board done. And there's millions of people worldwide that actually believe in, in, the, in the greatness of this vision board. So go ahead and do it. I encourage everyone to do it. Thank you, Tony. Sure. It has worked for many and it will be sure to work for you too. So let's, after the break, we'll be talking to, um, we're going to be talking to Carla, Carla Welch from All Creations. We'll go on our hand.
Welcome back to GMNC and I hope you're enjoying the show this morning. Thank you again to Extreme Events for our stunning studio furniture and wow cutting for GMC's awesome signage. In studio with me is Carla Welch from All Creations. Welcome Carla. Hi, how are you? Good and you? Good. So Carla, you're into digital marketing, right? Yes. So what was the inspiration? How did you get involved in digital marketing? Well, I've been with many, many brands prior to. I worked in the FMCG industry for a long extensive of time, working in depth with brands such as Red Bull, Lindt, uh, Wrigley's brands. Oh, lots of them I ran Titicoma Crystal Water for Gauteng and Free State, which gave me a core extensive in-depth insight to brands and how they need to be presented and the feel and touch to them. Mm -hmm. So also coming back from a very creative background, mm -hmm. um, I love graphics and I love how it makes you feel and how it speaks about the brand itself. So yeah, I got into it that way and then I became a mom and needed to get out of the fast track yes. business life of working for someone and my husband was a pilot for overseas. So ended up working for myself and started off small and got to know brands and developed our company and our staffing from there. Awesome, Carla. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I can certainly relate to the mum and the flexibility <laughs> needs. <laughs> yeah, and I have two. <laughs> yeah, so you basically have three jobs. <laughs> yes, four. <laughs> <laughs> so All Creations does digital marketing. Can you help people understand what, what do you mean by digital marketing? So digital marketing is to get your business out there, find the networks on a digital platform, making sure that you are sharing your platform and your business with everyone. Mm -hmm. It's an easier way to connect and more affordable to connect with people more instantly than the old school print formats and billboard signage. So it's also a lot more cost effective to go that route. Um, you can also do a lot more on there with video and you can do photos, you can do uh, you can do concept imagery, the idea that you're trying to perceive to your clients of who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. So digital marketing works very well as presenting a company to a very large audience. And of course it's more instantaneous instead of handing out flyers and things yes. like that and putting up yes. sign boards as yes. you said. Yeah, no, most definitely and a lot more cost effective and okay. then you also don't have these uh, COVID issues that we're dealing with now. <laughs> and riots that we um, recently yeah, had. Yeah, no, it does all affect everything, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot safer. So when we were chatting this morning, we, we spoke about how, you know, the first thing everybody cuts is marketing yes. off a budget. I mean, as soon as things get tough, the first thing we actually do is, cutting off, is cut off the marketing, which as you mentioned on your website is actually like cutting your legs off in your business. Yeah, it is. Um, so yeah, tell us a bit about that. So in our South African market, it is very high trend. There are other places in the world that also, when in crisis, the first thing that people end up dropping is the digital marketing. Reason being is because it's got a slower turnaround time. You don't really see the results immediately. Mm -hmm. And companies normally would expect their, their clientele as the call that comes through. Okay. They don't necessarily always see it as what's being presented. And that then eventually starts presenting over time that there's less calls, there's less people coming. So and after a while people realize, okay, well, actually marketing was not the right thing. But in with the world that we live in today, <clears throat> digital marketing is extremely important, especially during COVID because everyone is stuck inside. Everyone is on their tablet. Everyone is on their phone. Yes. They're constantly trying to see what's going on outside because they're inside. Mm -hmm. So it is a very good place to be presented as well as being cost effective, not needing during COVID to have an office. Yes. You could work from home. You can supply Which most chain people from are home. doing. Most people have. Um, we've had a lot of businesses that have moved home. Um, where they've just got a depot as opposed to an office front, being, you know, COVID regulations are quite stringent. And the up flare that comes from that, of being in person with people, becomes very, very cost effective on a business when they can catch COVID because they have to close for that. Yes. So digital marketing has become something that has been cut and it's a very big trend within the South African community, especially because you know, you are dealing with COVID regulations. Now you're dealing with price increases and less salary incomes because a lot of businesses have had to close. So it's one of those almost not needed um, provisions that companies make out for their funding. So it does, it does affect the marketing industry a lot um, when there is a problem like now with COVID. Right. But it always turns around where people end up 
you know, coming back, or that's why we also ended up opening up training courses, is for businesses that were not wanting to let go, but just really couldn't afford it. Right. So we came up with training programs to assist, especially at the time, our clients, mm -hmm. so that they could continue the marketing, that when they could afford, they hadn't lost everything they've already paid for. Okay. And that they also understood, and we found it's actually become something very useful for our clients to know. And so they understood what we are actually doing. So they don't go, oh, well, you know, there's 500 million reaches. What does that mean? <laughs> so reach and engagement, teaching them the process of what all these different processes are, what the actual meaning of them are, and how effective each of these statistics actually reflect to their business and their ROI. And so long term, how they can continue with the marketing themselves, yes. right? Yes. That's what it, it kind yes. of empowers people. It does. It's, it's very useful for them to understand what they're doing because it also then helps them align their business with what we are doing, whether they decide to take it over themselves later. Mm -hmm. We generally find in the beginning with the smaller business, they will do a lot of the handling and we'll help them through it. We obviously, once we've done the training, we're always available, phone us, you don't remember how this works. Okay, no, that's fine. It, this is how you do it. And we use a lot of um, like team viewer and any desk programs so we can show them on their own computer, which has been very convenient during COVID. So <laughs> we literally take control and this is how this works and this is how that works and this is what you click and how that process works. And it, it has helped a lot of our clients then rebuild while they've been at home because they've also learned a lot. So they then phone and they, oh, well, we've seen this and we've seen that. How can we implement this in our business? This, this is something I think would work for us. So it has made them more engaged on how to work their digital platforms. Which is awesome because then people can get going, you know, yes. and, and keep up with things and they start looking at things differently. And also the importance of why we need certain things like photographs of when they're on site and the products that they're selling. A lot of times when a client starts with us, they don't really understand what they need to be producing for us. Right. You know, we can do a lot of conceptual images, which is your look and feel, but to a certain degree, and um, you know, you need to be selling the product you are actually selling, the actual product, your actual workmanship, what makes you unique. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those, those really do play a big factor into clients coming to choose you as a business, not just any guy that sells security a similar product it, there's it is. hundreds of businesses that sell exactly the same thing but it's having to find your own audience people so that, that resonate talks to with your you. brand right and you Speaks mentioned to, your to me that you um that you develop that for people yes. so you come to carla with a product that you want to sell and carla can take you from actually developing who you are and what you have to offer can exactly. you tell us a bit more about that how do you speak to the brand so we always start off with the owner because the owner is the person that is the brand Really, the owner of your company is the person that you're actually dealing with. And that person and how they believe in things and how they apply themselves and their beliefs and their strategies on how they do things is actually the true core of brand. And brand is my favorite thing. I love brand. Absolutely love brand. So you love dealing with people's <laughs> authentic selves. Yes, but that's how you sell your brand properly. And that's how you find a true following and a more native follow rate, which then increases your ROI. So if I were to speak to somebody who's very similar to me, the chances are that they're going to be buying my brand because they have the same belief system. They like who they're dealing with. And that will then continue within business. It is a little bit harder when you do online um, selling um, items like that because people generally, it's a lot more branding from that aspect from a business for myself because we then need to find exactly who you are and sell that on a digital platform without you dealing with the customer one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So there are very many different ways to do it and different types of businesses and there's a different approach to every type of business and every customer is different. But generally we try and sell what your belief system as a business is and how you deal with things. And those people that are in your same type of life would generally follow what you are doing and yeah. Cool. Thank you. And it's super interesting. And I love how you say, you know, this is where you get the most reach with, uh, you know, the biggest bang for your buck kind of vibe. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's awesome, Carla. And thank you for sharing with us. How can we get hold of you? Um, you can get us anywhere digitally because that's what we do. <laughs> but um, majority on Facebook, um, which is at all creations, creations with a K and then Instagram, and then you can go check our website, which has got all, all the information and more, which is www.allcreations.co.za. Thank you very much, Carla. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And 
Next up, we're going to be celebrating our local sports stars. In light of that, we have Michael McGlynn, a marathon swimmer who's just returned back from Tokyo Olympics. So we'll be hearing from him after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to GMNC and I hope you've enjoyed the insights from Carla Walt who's told us all about digital marketing. Now in studio with me I've got Michael McGlynn and he's just returned from the Tokyo Olympics so we've got a local celebrity in the house. <laughs> Welcome Michael, it's such a pleasure that you've joined us. Thank you, thanks for having me on the show. Great, so uh, Michael, apart from the swimming stuff because we're going, definitely going to get to that, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to separate the two at this point. Um, I can imagine. <laughs> but yeah, just a normal guy from Durban growing up and um, found a passion for swimming mm -hmm. um, at an early age. And um, yeah, you know, I'm out of school now a few years and um, just returned from Tokyo and yes. you know, life's a bit crazy at the moment. I can only imagine. <laughs> so when you started, you started off with the mid -mile miles and things like that. Would you like yes. to tell us a bit about that progression? Yes. How did you reach the Olympics? <laughs> I, think, I think it's important to say I had the Olympic dream from about 12 years old. Um, wow. When I watched the London Olympics on TV, I thought, um, you know, Tokyo was about eight years away at that time. And I thought, you know, I was 12 years old. At 20, I could be there. And yeah, I rolled around in nine years' time with, you know, with COVID and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, it was difficult, of course. I had to qualify twice. And um, yeah, I think mid mile last year, 2020, before COVID hit, um, was the last mid mile that, uh, you know, everyone was there. And yeah, that was my breakout swim. And 
yeah, I was very happy with that, and you know, it really showed me that I, I can be up there, and mm. yeah. Well, that's awesome, really awesome. So you started from 12 years old, and of course, it's taken a ton of perseverance <laughs> and determination and yes, hard work. For sure. Yeah, and tell us about your experience getting to Tokyo. What did it feel like being there? What was going through your mind? You know, it was it was quite crazy, of course, because I came from the level four COVID restrictions and and the looting, and then. You know, to jump straight from that to Olympics. Um, you know, when I got there, I think my first memory actually is of me jet lagged at 4 a.m. on the 26th of July. You know, you know, like crying almost because it was like I'm so happy to be here. And then you see the magnitude of how big this place is and, and uh, what it really means. What it really it means. Like all just hit you. <laughs> and, and how long it took to get here. Um, yes. I think honestly, that's when I realized how blessed I was to be at, in Tokyo and you know at the Olympic Games. And um, for young people out there, what, what message do you have? I would say Aspiring never, swimmers. I would say never give up. Obviously, that's, you know, that's what it's going to take to get there. Um, but, you know, dream as big as you can dream. Um, I was just a young kid who has a dream. And, um, you know, after going to Tokyo, I want to maybe go to Paris now. And, um, yeah, I just know, know yourself. You know, mm -hmm. if, I think if you know yourself and don't let anyone you know, tell you who you are, I think that makes a big difference. Definitely. So, yeah, what's, what are you up to now, now that you're back? <laughs> I think the first thing I'm on is I'm on a break. Um, you're catching your breath. Catching your breath, <laughs> um, seeing my family and friends. Um, it was a little difficult as well trying to dodge COVID, um, you know, in the earlier days leading up to trials. And I qualified in Portugal, so I was, you know, in the country, out the country, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, traveling to different pools and stuff. So it was very much a hustle lifestyle before Tokyo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just good to be back. Good to be back in Durban, my home city. And um, yeah, I think everyone's happy to have me back as well. And uh, yeah, just the, the support I've received, um, you know, it's, you know, what can you say about that? <laughs> Thank you to everyone. That's awesome, really awesome. And you're such a humble guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Humble and young and very talented. That you know, that's, that people have a lot to learn from that. <laughs> so in speaking of that, socially, are you getting out there to young people? How can we get hold of you? I know your Instagram following is quite huge. Yes, uh, I think you know, they can get a hold of me on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, a lot of people stop me now to chat to me and um, ask me about Tokyo and about you know, something I wasn't really used to before. Definitely. And, um, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, since I qualified in June, that month before I left, I was trying to deal, you know, with, you know, qualifying for Olympics and now being on the team. And then, you know, when I came back, it was how was Tokyo and everything, <laughs> which I appreciate, you know, from the bottom of my heart. And, um, yeah, it's just been a whirlwind, to be honest. And um, I landed up having a great swim over when I was there. And, uh, yeah, it's just this whole uh, time has just been, you know, crazy. Cool, cool. I can imagine getting used to all of it. And yes, no, it's definitely. It was just, uh, you know, when you know someone obviously sees me on the TV, and which has obviously been it took a village to get there. Um, you know, thanks to my family as well, and um, my sponsors, and you know, every everyone that's been there because it's 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 not been an easy road. But um, yeah, everyone stops to talk to me. You know, 30 minutes here, 20 minutes here, and it's it's really nice. And um, you know, they give me the time of day and you know, I try and give the same back and uh, it's really nice the people of South Africa, especially my, you know, my suburb, uh, that's been great. So you mentioned that when you were 12, you actually, you know, wanted to get into swimming, but why yeah. swimming in particular? Maybe because I couldn't run. <laughs> I'm, not <laughs> sure. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I think, you know, you just, I think you're just kind of living your normal life. Um, you know, I started swimming at about seven, so I had about five years of just, you know, training and growing under my belt and then the London Olympics came on and I just, it was just something I guess that resonated with me at the time and, you know, it was just, you know, I was there every night watching, you know, the finals of swimming and, you know, I was swimming at the time but that was kind of the moment I decided, you know, this is what I want to do. Cool. I'm not sure how I'm going to get there, but this is it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you had a dream, that's what counts. Yes, for sure. So, marathon swimmer, so w what does that mean for viewers that don't know? What sort of distances are we looking at? So, marathon swimmer, I guess, can be anything from like uh, 5 kilometer, 10 kilometer and over. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a 25 kilometer as well um, at World Champs, but, you know, I kind of entered the race by 
by chance because I was also training for Olympics in the pool and uh, in the 800 free and at the time I was like I'm not too sure if I'm going to close the time down in time <laughs> so uh, I, I did the open water swim and I was quite good at it and I enjoyed it and you know it was Olympics was approaching the next year and uh, yeah so I started that at 19 and you know four months later I won the trials and then a month later COVID hit so I then had to redo that process um, but yeah I think it was by chance I got into the race um, and yeah I never kind of looked back because I knew it was the path I needed to take you know to get to Olympics and it's really tough just trying to make it that's quite a kind of realized afterwards and um, you know you get to Olympics and the best athletes of the world are there and it's you know it's mm. not it's not a it's not easy <laughs> yeah definitely and for people that are actually still thinking about it, well, what are the biggest differences between swimming in a pool and then open swims? What are some of the benefits or differences? I kind of ride the wave in between both at this point. You know, I'm swimming in the pool, I'm swimming in the open water. I did life saving growing up. My dad actually showed me a video last night and, um, of me winning a surf swim when I was very young. And <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of just race wherever. I don't think it's the medium that matters to me anymore. Um, but for newbies? For, for newbies, I would say, yeah, five kilometer, 10 kilometer, the mid-mile mile. I think the mid-mile mile is a great place to start and, you know, they've always had my back and, um, yeah, uh, it's the biggest open water swim in the world. So to be double champion of that is, yeah, amazing. Definitely. <laughs> so thank you very much, Michael, for joining us. Thanks and so I'm much. sure you've been an inspiration to many, many, and you're going to continue being an inspiration thank to you. a lot more people. <laughs> Appreciate um, that. I'm definitely a proud South African and I'm sure many <laughs> other people are as well. So yes. thank you very much for that. Thank you. And <clears throat> next up we will have a pre-recorded video from Farah Manju and she is a, quite a renowned um, coach and she does women and children. So let's go off to that. <laughs> Hi guys, Jason here from Chapman Building. Looking forward to introducing a new 13 episode series called Under Construction with Chapman Building. We will be covering various aspects of the building industry and our business to educate and help Belita residents understand more about the building industry. Welcome back 
to GMNC. And as promised, we have Farah, who is a life coach, but with a twist. Farah, hello, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Welcome to GMNC. Um, please introduce yourself for people who don't know you and tell us about your occupation. Yes, so I am a female and kids empowerment coach. Wow. That means I empower women and children to become the best versions of themselves. Wow, that's very, very interesting. So tell us about the type of services that you guys offer. So I specialize in holistic healing. Okay. Healing of the mind, body and soul. And bringing people into alignment with their true essence of joy, happiness and peace. And also helping them to embrace their authentic selves mm -hmm. and build more self-confidence and self-esteem. Mm. Because I feel that a person needs confidence in order to accomplish their goals and succeed in life. So it is a secret ingredient wow. that really allows you to shine bright and achieve everything that you really desire. 100%. Well, that's so great to hear. So tell me the part whereby you work with um, kids. How challenging is that one? Because you know how little ones can get or, you know, teenagers and stuff like that. So how do you break through for them, for you to have that kind of a relationship and they can feel comfortable with you? Interesting you ask because previously I was a teacher um, in a high school environment and I had a deep connection with teenagers oh. where they felt very open and comfortable to confide in me yeah. and a lot of the things that were going on at home their uh, family dynamics and the stress with their whole family relationships yeah. And adjustments like a lot of the kids were going through families were going through divorce yeah. and they would come to me and confide in me so I'm naturally the go-to person and I'm an, a good listener and easy to communicate with so I found there was a need and there was a gap in the, in the market yeah. for somebody to empower children and to connect with them and I can also act like a child, so I'm very fun <laughs> and playful. Yeah. So when the kids and teenagers come to me, I connect with them and I build rapport and I come down to their level. So they see me as a friend and oh, not yeah. somebody higher than them. That's true. And then that's how we um, build a relationship where they feel they can trust me and open up to me. And actually, I feel so fulfilled helping them. It's wow. not a challenge at all. It's a passion. Yeah. And I sense like you are very calm, uh, but very warm. You know, I get a sense of that. And then a lot of uh, youngsters, you know, uh, they, they like to, to, to have a chat with someone who is friendly, who doesn't seem like it's going to judge them, you know, who they can be able to confide in. Wow, that's fantastic. So if you had to tell me one of the things that makes you stand out, what would it be? I guess that I look at the whole picture, mm. that I don't just work on one specific thing, okay. that I get to the root cause of what is causing um, dysfunctional in a person, whether it's a behavioral issue that yeah. they want to work on, an yes. emotional issue, yes. or they want to achieve a goal where they're looking at things in the future that they want to aspire towards. Yes. So I get to the root cause of what is blocking them, what is serving as a obstacle or a challenge, yeah. and we uproot those issues and they're able to flourish and grow. And that's where the true healing comes in, where I heal the source of the issue yeah. and not just the symptoms or the su fish, uh, superficial layers. Yes, yes, yes. So as a wife, as a mother, <laughs> and then a businesswoman, how do you tackle that? So I have a routine that yeah. I follow mm -hmm. with a lot of flow. So I love having fun and having breaks in my day. So okay. I've overcome the challenge of being a workaholic okay. and giving too much of myself to people yeah. because I love people and I love my family yes. so I've managed to maintain a balance by yeah. having a flexible schedule where I get to schedule four hours in a day for work yes. four hours for 
the home environment and I still have time for my kids and myself and me time. Wow. So having time to relax and take care of me, I'm able to fill my cup and give to others from the overflow. 100%. So uh, what advice would you give to um, a woman, you know, a, a parent and kids, you know, who are going through stuff that would actually get your help? Like, what advice would you tell them in order for them to consider getting mm. assistance for a person like you? So when, it look, when you, you look at your kids yeah. and you pick up that they are having some issues, mm. whether it's academic or mm. it's personal, yeah. their confidence mm. is lacking, or they are unable to make friends, so it's maybe a social challenge, yeah. that not to let it plo uh, prolong till it's really a huge mm. issue, yeah, but to nip it in the bud and mm. seek assistance as soon as you identify there's a problem. Mm. And also looking at the mom in the home, that her energy is very important to keep the home stable yes, and in balance. Yeah. So for moms like myself who have a busy life to also get support because emotionally we mm. take on a lot of stress. Yes. And if we are handling the stress in a positive way and managing our mental stress and emotional overwhelm mm. and we calm and collected yeah. and centered of course and positive we're giving that off to our families and that's where I support moms and their children as a family. Wow, fantastic. So um, if people want to get a hold of you, you know, get a hold of your services, where can they go? What are your socials and where are you based? Okay, so I live in Stanga okay. and my main branch is in Stanga. I have a beautiful office on my home that I've is Celine. It is <laughs> very, very gorgeous. Yes, so I operate mainly from Stanga. People can come to me or on Zoom, mm -hmm. but I also rent an office here in Belito oh. behind um, Belito, Belito uh, Lifestyle okay. Center okay. at Silver Waystone. Wow. Yeah. So your socials, like is there a number that people can actually get? So I think it's easy for people to log on to my website, mm -hmm. which is barakacoaching.co.za. And I'm everywhere when it comes to <laughs> social <laughs> social media. Yes. So I have a YouTube channel. It's wow. Farah Manju dash Baraka Coaching. And my Instagram handle is Farah Manju. And my Facebook is Baraka Coaching and Empowerment, the name of my business. Well, thank you very much for coming through. <laughs> I, I can tell you now I feel so motivated and I know whoever is watching at home is also feeling excited that if they're going through something, there is help out there. Well, folks, you heard it first here on the morning show where you can actually get assistance with Farah, who is a, a, an empowerment coach and with a twist and a style of her own. Well, thank you. A new month, new opportunities, and that is exactly what we are offering on GMNC during the month of August. Get your business noticed by entering our competition to win a free interview on GMNC, putting your brand into the face of thousands of potential customers. Remember, people buy from people. What's up your name, company name and social media links to 066-232-1385 and you could be this fortunate recipient of this incredible opportunity. A winner per week will be announced live on our Friday shows starting the 6th of August and a winner each Friday for the remainder of the month. Welcome back to GMNC and I hope you've been enjoying the show thus far. Thank you to Pooza Water for our studio bottled water and to Performance Coffee authorized dealer for Jura Coffee Machines as well as Salt Truck Coffee for our morning show coffee. The weather and surf reports coming up next, it'll be presented by Haley and Dion.
Good morning everyone and welcome to your weather for today. Brought to you by Belito Gas and Bride. Enjoy today's weather. Ons is nog steeds in augustus maand en die weer verander hierdie week. Soos ons vrouwense baie mos maar doen. We have a high of 23 degrees and a low of 18 degrees. The real fuel will be 25 degrees and the real fuel shade 21 degrees. We have a southerly wind at 11 kilometers per hour and wind gusts at 19 kilometers per hour. We have 25% chance of showers. The sunrise will be at 6.26 a.m. and the sunset at 5.33 p.m. Next up will be your surf report brought to you by 1018 Skryfboeftes and Dion Bosman from Victory Surf. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, Belito, and welcome to a windless Wednesday. It's going to be a cracker day today. It's a nice big southwesterly came through in the evening, straightened up all the ocean, and no more lumps and bumps, but really, really good surf at all the beaches. A nice one and a half meter swell, so nice three feet waves, lots and lots of good peaks everywhere. The bog really, really good. Nice light uh, northwesterlies this morning, and it'll turn to a light southeasterly by the afternoon. So definitely a beach day and definitely waves everywhere. Take your bodyboard, take your surfboard, take your sup, go and have a gas. It's a great day today. We'll chat again tomorrow. I hope you're enjoying the show thus far and you're inspired and feeling great for your Wednesday morning. Next up, we have a goodie. It's Rowan Stewart with No World for a Virtuous Heart. And it looks like it's another beautiful day in the North Coast today. So take all the inspiration and motivation that you got from us today and put it to good use. Remember, it's never give up day. Thank you to all our guests and all our sponsors. It's such a pleasure to be working with you. Stay tuned. Remember to enjoy the music video and then round up the kids for Laugh Out Larry, which will play after the show. Have an awesome day, North Coast. I caught myself today About to give up on the human race Got tired of apathy, hate full of hate Felt like my values were just out of date And I guess that honor is on Our kings are crooks and they stole our hopes Well, I try to be merciful In this land of kill or be killed No world for a virtuous heart And called out for the good and wise But they turn bad just to survive No world for a virtuous heart Virtuous heart I saw a school on fire An angry totem of burning tires I walked among the debris on the strand A sea of waste that washed up on the sand And I'm wondering if I could make a change And if one man's good matters anyway Still I try to be merciful In this land of kill or be killed No world for a virtuous heart And I called out for the good and they turn bad just to survive No world for a virtuous heart So I try to fight the hate in my heart Try to dream of love but it's hard Finding the flame in the dark Still I'll keep on trying to see the good side Fight the good fight even though it's no world for a virtuous heart a virtue
this heart Virtuous Virtuous heart, virtuous heart. 